just produced some of the harshest, most draconian laws that literally threaten trans existence. What's your reaction to that video? Believe it or not, that video is real. You just watched Dana Bash ask Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg about a viral ad released by the DeSantis War Room, and that featured a clip from a video that I uploaded on May 17th where I discussed how DeSantis' policies make it functionally impossible for most trans people to exist in the state of Florida. And towards the end of that video, I shared a GoFundMe for my trans friend who is forced to leave her own state because of his policies, but DeSantis's people think that anger over this cruel and fascistic attack on an entire group of people is based, so based, that they want to put it in an ad. And if you're wondering why DeSantis refuses to condemn neo-Nazis who support him, it's because he wants their support, and this ad is further proof that that is indeed the case. Now, when it comes to the ad itself, it went massively, massively viral, and got tens of millions of views, but I unfortunately cannot play it for you due to copyrighted music. If you play more than a few seconds, it's gonna get claimed. But let me just give you the rundown of it really quick so you have a little bit more context about what we're talking about here. Basically, it starts by painting Trump as pro-LGBTQ, LOL, by showing all of his statements in support of the community, then juxtaposes that with all of the homophobic and transphobic policies that DeSantis has implemented with jump cuts to scenes from American Psycho, which is an interesting choice, and homoerotic images of bodybuilders also cut in. And essentially, the message is that Trump says that he's anti-LGBTQ, but here's proof that he's not. DeSantis is actually anti-LGBTQ. In fact, he's the most homophobic and transphobic governor ever. That's the gist of the ad. But Trump supporters hit back, throwing this tweet in the face of DeSanctimonious by gay conservative Dave Rubin, who says DeSantis sent him and his husband matching onesies for their babies. Hmm, curious DeSantis, you say that you hate gay people, but yet, care to explain this? This shoe, DeSantis? I happen to be gay. I am married to a dude, okay? We're having kids. You know what, what showed up at my door two days ago? A package with two, we're having two babies with two baby onesies from Ron DeSantis Get and his wife, here. okay? He does not hate gay people. At this PragerU event that I mentioned before, I introduced, I said, uh, Governor, this is my husband, David. Big hug, smile, took a picture, congratulations on the mm -hmm. kid. You know, it's crazy that just a year ago, Dave Rubin using his homosexuality to sanitize DeSantis's homophobic policies could now be used against him. That's the state of conservative politics in 2023, folks. But in DeSantis's, I guess, defense, maybe we'll call it that, Dave Rubin is wrong. There is a reason why Tom Askell, the pastor who called for gays to be put to death, endorsed DeSantis over Donald Trump. In fact, that same pastor spoke at DeSantis' second inauguration, but DeSantis hating LGBTQ plus people isn't surprising. However, people who voted for the Leopards Eating People's Faces party are now vocalizing, I guess, surprise that leopards are eating their faces. I'm, of course, talking about gay, trans, and Republican people who felt like DeSantis' ad when a little bit too far. The policies didn't bother them, but the ad, that's where they're drawing the line. For example, former Trump administration official Rick Grinnell, a gay man, tweeted that the ad was undeniably homophobic and asked DeSantis' rapid response director, Christina Pushaw, why she hates gay people. Caitlyn Jenner tweeted, DeSantis has hit a new low, but he's so desperate he'll do anything to get ahead. That's been the theme of his campaign. You can't win a general, let alone 2028, by going after people that are integral parts <laughs> Of the conservative movement. Really, Caitlin? Really? LGBTQ plus people are part of the conservative movement? The log cabin Republicans denounced it in a thread on Twitter saying, today's message from the DeSantis campaign war room is divisive and desperate. Republicans and other common sense conservatives know Ron DeSantis has alienated swing state and younger voters. Also, gay Republican David Leatherwood responded saying, I spent the last seven years of my life working with Trump to make the GOP a more welcoming place for gays while also being 
anti-groomer, anti-woke, and pro-religious liberty. I've even worked with DeSantis on this agenda. This ad is a slap in the face and makes any LGBT person supporting DeSantis look like an absolute idiot. A little bit of self-awareness there. Now, in response to him being made fun of for the leopards eating faces meme, David responded saying, the leopard did not eat my face. I am the leopard. And he shared, he shared a picture of him in a leopard print shirt. <laughs> Which I've got to say is the gayest fucking picture I've ever seen in my life. But regardless, speaking of leopards eating people's faces, Alejandra Carballo shared a Twitter exchange between David Leatherwood and Caitlyn Jenner, where she reveals Jamie Mitchell of Gays Against Groomers is on DeSantis's payroll. And for those of you who don't remember, this is the fascist who justified the Club Q mass shooting on national television. And unfortunately, you know, the tragedy that happened in Colorado Springs the other night, uh, you know, it was expected and predictable. Um, we all within Gays Against Groomers saw this coming from a mile away. Yeah. And sadly, I don't think it's going to stop until we uh, end this evil agenda that is attacking children. So Ron DeSantis is surrounded by people who either believe that LGBTQ people should be put to death full stop or at best that violence against them by right wing terrorists is justified so long as they keep attacking children. And when they say attack children, what they mean is basically drag queen story hour and gender affirming care. But yet all of these gay and trans Republicans are completely shocked that DeSantis would go this far and cross some sort of a line. So it is astonishing to me, obviously, that there are any LGBTQ plus people who support a fascist like Ron DeSantis, whose eliminationist policies directly endanger their lives, but they exist. For example, in an op-ed for the Daily Beast, Yvonne Dean Bailey claims that she was all in for DeSantis before she saw this disgusting ad, writing, quote, despite my conservative credentials, you couldn't pay me to vote for the Florida governor now. I am a lesbian and DeSantis has made it abundantly clear that he doesn't want any LGBTQ plus conservatives on his team because of their identity. And seeing this reaction is mind blowing to me because newsflash, he never wanted you to be part of his movement. You are the person who he is using to get popular, right? Attacking you is boosting his national profile. So why are you suddenly surprised? Did you not know that he didn't like you before this ad? He removed LGBTQ plus books from schools, forced teachers back into the closet. He banned pride and drag. But this ad, that's where, you know, this is the uh, straw that broke the camel's back, apparently, to a lot of queer conservatives. They're just genuinely stupid. I can't be polite. I, I have to just state the obvious fact that these people are fucking dipshits for not realizing what DeSantis or the entire Republican Party apparatus is, right? And a lot of this shock from right-wing homosexuals comes from the naive belief that the fascists in their party are only going to come for trans people and they're going to stop right there. They're not going to go further and attack more LGBTQ plus people. They're just going to go for the trans people and then that's it. They actually thought that attacking their own community, attacking trans people would further ingratiate gay people with Republicans but that's not how this works. And I think that this meme describes them perfectly. A Republican thanks a gay man for helping him outlaw trans people and drag queens, but then the gay guy asks, so who are we going after next? And the Republican just looks at him. And then the gay guy asks again, I said, who's next? And then the guy just looks at him again. And then the gay guy asks, who? It's you, dipshit. They're going after you, Dave Rubin, and Log Cabin Republicans, and Rick Grinnell. And don't think that you being rich is going to save you from the blender too, Caitlyn Jenner. They're going after you, okay? But choosing to prioritize class interests over their own human dignity is coming back to bite them, and they're surprised. Again, it goes back to the original meme of, I never thought that leopards would eat my face, says person who voted for the leopards eating people's faces party. Now, getting back to the ad, I actually want to show you Pete Buttigieg's response, because even though his neoliberal politics are very different, actually antithetical to mine, I actually think that his response to this was right on point. I'm going to choose my words carefully, partly because I'm appearing as secretary, so I, I can't talk about campaigns. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm going to leave aside the strangeness of trying to prove your manhood by putting up a video that splices images of you in between 
oiled up shirtless bodybuilders and just get to the bigger issue that, that is on my mind whenever I see this stuff in, in the policy space, which is, again, who are you trying to help? Who are you trying to make better off? And what public policy problems do you get up in the morning thinking about how to solve? And that's a good response because DeSantis and really the entire Republican Party in general, they're running on hate and cruelty. And that's it. They're not even pretending to care about economic issues or working class issues at this point. Their voters know this, though, right? They will happily vote against their own self-interests just to inflict more pain and suffering on marginalized communities. Even Trump remarked about how Republicans seemingly care more about attacking trans people than tax cuts. Case in point. It's amazing how strongly people feel about that. You see, I'm talking about cutting taxes. People go like that. Talking about talk about transgender. Everyone goes crazy. Who would have thought five years ago you didn't know what the hell it was? Interesting how that works, isn't it? Do Republican voters ever wonder why their financial situation continues to deteriorate year after year? Yet Republicans and their propagandists, they're not proposing any new solutions. They're just saying, hey, be mad at this marginalized group. Now this one, instead of the elites at the top that are exploiting them and making their financial situation worse. Do they ever think, hmm, maybe I'm being duped by a party that doesn't care about me. Maybe I'm being robbed blind by elites and they want me to hate these people who have no effect on my life when in actuality I should be looking at the top. No, of course not. Because this strategy works. Otherwise, they wouldn't be doing it year after year. This time, it's trans people and LGBTQ plus people. But by the next election cycle, it could be immigrants again. It could be Muslims. They're always changing the target because they don't want their voters to see what's actually affecting their lives negatively, right? But these voters don't care. They're A-OK cutting off their noses to spite their faces just because seeing other people do worse than them, seeing other people get harmed, that at least makes them feel like they're doing OK, even if in actuality they're not, right? Income and wealth inequality is as bad as it's been, but yet, so long as the trans people don't have rights, these Republican voters are perfectly fine voting for this party. And to be crystal clear here, it's not just DeSantis. That's what I want to emphasize here. Perhaps he's the most explicit in his genocidal goals, but the entire Republican Party, including Trump, by the way, has made it very clear that the existence of LGBTQ plus people is existentially threatened by them getting power. The Supreme Court just legalized discrimination in a case based on nothing. So regardless of who is or isn't the GOP's nominee, the heads of LGBTQ plus people are on the chopping block no matter what. And actively supporting this genocidal and fascistic party is an act of violence against your LGBTQ plus friends and family. You don't have to actively support Democrats, right? You don't have to go out of your way to become a liberal or a leftist, but what I am saying is that voting for Republicans is an act of violence against your LGBTQ plus friends and family. I would rather you not vote at this point than vote for this party that is taking the country backwards, moving us closer and closer towards authoritarianism and genocide. And I'm letting my friends and family know that they can't vote Republican and support me. And you should do the same. But at the end of the day, it's just really a statement on where we're at, how far we've fallen, that boasting about homophobia is something that Republican politicians are doing, whereas five years ago they were downplaying the homophobia. That tells you a lot, and it's a bit of a warning sign to everyone in society that things are going to get worse if this party remains unchecked. Woke mom. Woke ideology. Woke ideology. Woke ideology. Woke ideology. Woke ideology. Woke test. Woke ideology. Woke Olympics. Woke ideology. 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 Wo